Welcome back guys, and uh, today we're going to be working on the Golf R32. So just to recap, we've found some, uh, well quite a lot now, oil in the coolant. Uh, we've been trying to diagnose what the fault is, whether it's head gasket, oil cooler, etc. So we've gone ahead and we fitted a brand new oil cooler to the system. We flushed everything out, put clean water in. Uh, so that was to test whether it was the oil cooler. And as we've discovered in the last video, it's not the oil cooler. So it must be the head gasket. So that's what we're gonna do in this video. We're gonna change the head gasket out and hopefully that fixes our problem. So guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. Only about 90% of you guys who actually watch my videos are subscribed. So I, I would really appreciate it if you could hit that subscribe button. It's free, it doesn't cost you a penny and you get to stay up to date with all my videos that I drop about this Golf R32 Turbo. So once we've got the head gasket all done and squared away, you're finished. We've got to build the exhaust system, which is all the way back. And then we've got mapping on the 18th of May. So that's the plan. Try to get it all done for the mapping and hopefully we'll get the power we, we originally set out for. So with that said, I'm going to turn the camera around and we'll get cracking taking this head off. So if anyone needed any extra proof that the, uh, the oil is definitely still going in there, then, uh, you know, you've pretty much, you know, that's not just residual oil that's been sitting in the system, is it? So, um, the oil still looks clean. So the water's not getting into the oil jacket, into the oil system. It's just the oil getting into the water system. So fingers crossed, we'll actually be able to find what is causing it. You know, hopefully there's a break in the gasket that we can visually see it, but I'm not holding much luck. Sometimes these things, you just can't tell where they've broken. Um, only by replacing a part does it seem to fix itself, so. Uh, we're gonna get getting to start taking head off. So we removed the cam cover, um, turbo inlet, and yeah, just bits around the top, the wiring, etc. I'm gonna try and leave as much as I can attached to it at once, but we'll see how we go. This is a pretty daunting process for anyone who's uh, never done a head gasket, and even for me, who you know I've done this gasket before. It's still a daunting task and you just need to approach it in a, in a simplistic way. Essentially, you just need to start on taking stuff off that is sort of attached to the head because the head's coming off. So if it's attached to the head, it needs to come off. You'll see me taking all the wiring that's attached to the head from all the sensors and the coils. And then I'm tackling the exhaust. So I'm getting the downpipe off the turbo, I'm getting the turbo off the manifold and I'm getting the manifold off the head. I appreciate a lot of this, you can, you can only see me. And it looks like I've fallen asleep in a lot of the places, but I haven't. I just need to stretch down right underneath the turbo manifold, which is a bit of a stretch, so I pretty much have to lay down on the engine to get to it. manifold so I was getting a bit of blowing so you can see it's coming from this area here and from this area here so it's coming from both areas maybe it's bowed so I'm gonna get this re I'm gonna get this refaced as well as the head and then hopefully that will stop these from leaking So this is how the uh, this is how the gasket would have sat on the engine. This this side here is where the manifold goes to, and you can clearly see the gasket has not really been doing this job very well. Uh, can you see that black in there? Yeah, it's not been doing this job very well. Uh, these are these are brand new. Uh, when I put the new SPA manifold on from Stealth, um, so they obviously somehow came apart. Uh, whether the uh, whether the turbo manifolds um, blown or not, we'll have to find out when we take it to the skimmers. So these were brand new when I put it on, so I don't think I reused them. I didn't. I 
Like I say, I've got the majority of the stuff off the head, so just need the thermostat housing off and then I can get to the timing case bolts here and then take the uh, cam cover off. All the turbo, the manifold's disconnected and uh, all ready to go. So as you can see, what I mean here, the dark patches, you can see it even on the bolts dark bolts that's where the exhaust has been leaking um, so perhaps that turbo manifold is warped over there maybe the turbo manifold is warped but I will be sending that away to get um, machine skimmed uh, flat with the head so hopefully we'll have no more issues with that leaking because funnily enough I never had that issue with the the cheapy Chinese turbo uh, manifold I only got it with the uh, SPA one, and that's the second set of gaskets. So that uh, that one's obviously must be warped, but we'll see when we take it to the machine shop. But the inlet manifold is going to stay on. I'm going to take the head off with that on, um, just because there's got a gasket in there that I can't seem to get hold of a new gasket for. Uh, not many, many people make them, and if they do, they're from either the states or Australia, and they're like 50, 60 pounds you know, sort of $80 or so, just for, you know, simple gasket. So I'm gonna take the head off with the manifold and then try and carefully take that off when the, manif when the head's on the bench. Um, and also, uh, and also it means I don't have to take the front end off either to get the head off. Uh, Cause I'd have to take the front end off to get to the bolts to do, to take the inlet manifold off. So if I could take the manifold off with the head, then that's all good. And that means then I could take the manifold off on the bench without having to take the front end off. That's the plan anyway. So just to recap, it's cam cover, the uh, water pipes for the thermostat, side, side time and chain cover, and then it's just head bolts and then off. So I'll probably continue that a bit later on. Um, and but for now it's just about to start raining and i'm going to call it quits for today and carry on guys you wouldn't adam and eve it i thought to myself you know what i'll do just for my own sanity i'll check the filter for the dsg gearbox now i thought i checked the oil when i did the i took the drain plug out um but that could have been just residual oil sort of sitting where the, the plug is so I thought I'd just just check take the filter off and just check the oil to make sure it's clean and uh, it's got no water in it let me show you what I found this is the filter for the DSG gearbox look at that if that's not oil and water contamination I don't know what is so you know what that is then don't you this little thing is broken so that's our issue not a head gasket which is a good thing i've started taking the engine apart uh, <laughs> um but anyway i needed to get that off regardless um so we can get it so we can get the uh, face skimmed here so i needed to get that off anyway but I haven't done too much extra work, I suppose. It's only about an hour's work. So I will replace this and I bet you that will be our issue solved. There's probably this oil cooler here. It's mixing the coolant in there. It was the one that was on the gearbox when I bought the gearbox. This is obviously a replacement gearbox. So this is the oil cooler from that gearbox. I didn't put my one on there. So I'll buy a brand new one of them and I'm willing to bet that's my issue. If only I would have checked that a week or so ago, the video would have been a lot shorter. But it's a good thing, I suppose, because uh, I could probably get an uprated one of those coolers anyway. They are th they can buy thicker ones, uh, sort of a thicker uh, cooling capacity. So um, I'll get one of them uh, just to be sure, because, you know, I will be smashing this around the track. So, um, yeah. <laughs> Let's get that, let's get that uh, oil cooler changed and some final way of flushing out with the DSG oil. Um, Cause that's not gonna be good for the mechatronics at all. So, well, 
at least we know what the problem is. I hate not, I hate doing work to cars where I don't know what the problem is and I'm just having to throw parts at it. But now we know exactly what it is. Um, it's pretty evident, so it's that DSG oil cooler or exchange heat exchanger. I'll drop this video now, guys. A little bit of a turn of events, but I'll publish it now. And when I get the new oil cooler, I will start a new video, uh, fit in the oil cooler, and then we'll do another video with the entire exhaust system, including the uh, manifold, and we'll go from there. So, guys, thank you very much for watching, and thanks very much for all the all the comments and all the guidance you guys have given me over the last few videos and all the videos generally. But um, thank you, guys, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. It's free, so why wouldn't you? And you can step there all the content and the issues I have with my R32 and all the fun I have with it as well. So thanks guys and I'll see you in the next one. I know you told your friend you're not okay. And tell me what's wrong and why you never said you felt that way. Guess you